Writer-director Walter Hill's 1984 cult classic begins with a notice that we're in another time, another place. Like the Los Angeles of Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, this is a world of flickering neon and rain-soaked alleys, but it's also a world where women sing like Pat Benatar and men still drive cherry red Studebakers. Streets of Fire is a movie that can earnestly call itself a rock and roll fable and get away with it. Thanks for joining us here at the Rewind Zone as we hit Rewind back to 1984 Streets of Fire, starring Diane Lane, Michael Pare, and Rick Moranis. Let's check in with the cast of this underrated 80s rock film and update the cast for you while we learn more about the film in the process. Though Streets of Fire was a box office bomb when it was released in 1984, grossing only $8 million in North America with a budget of over $14.5 million, its explosive action sequences, score, and memorable performances by Lane, Willem Dafoe, and Rick Moranis have gained it a cult following. The film also had a somewhat understated, but no less substantial legacy as a visual and spiritual touchstone in the speculative subgenre of cyberpunk. Cyberpunk as we know it today was still in its infancy when Streets of Fire rolled around. Along with Blade Runner, films like 1981's Escape from New York, 82's Burst City and 82's Tron all helped establish the genre's visual language. Streets of Fire emerged from out of this crop of defining films, an antiquated rock and roll action romance set in another time and another place. Let's now turn our attention to five very interesting facts from the film that you may not have known about. Michael Pare was a relative unknown when he was brought in for the film. Walter Hill had seen him in 1983's Eddie and the Cruises, but they had already offered the role to Tom Cruise and already had it turned down by Eric Roberts. Hill needed someone who could play young for the character, but needed a guy who could show an edge. Pare was the man they eventually went with. This was intended to be the first in a trilogy of action films starring Pare as Tom Cody. However, its failure at the box office had put an end to the project. The final fight scene with the Hammers was filmed over a two-week period. Originally, the scene was much more violent, with Pare stabbing Defoe to the end of the fight. They toned it down because they wanted to focus more on the music than the violence. The Blasters are the only band that play themselves in the movie. They had turned down an opportunity to do a couple of songs for 48 hours, which was director Walter Hill's previous film, and they felt like idiots because the movie was a hit. When they got the chance to do Streets of Fire, they couldn't pass it up. Walter Hill was reluctant to cast Diane Lane because he felt she was too young for the role. Hill met Lane in New York City and she auditioned for him in black leather pants, a black mesh top, and high-heeled boots. He was surprised with her total commitment to selling herself as a rock and roll star. She was only 18 at the time. Streets of Fire frequently feels ahead of its time, a proto mashup of western biker flick and rock and roll opera with a unique visual point of view. Think of a comic book movie without the comic book. Walter Hill's singular vision of another time, another place, is a dark little thrill, like hearing the rumble of a pack of motorcycles in the distance. If you've yet to see this film, we highly suggest getting your hands on a copy. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button to show your support if you're enjoying our videos. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.